Uh, Minister, I raise concerns in my contributions to the budget debate that the 2024 budget was not a good budget for Ireland. I might add it was also not a good budget for my constituency of Waterford either. As I outlined on my budget day comments, this budget breaks the fiscal rules adopted by government to control state spending. It breaks ranks with the advice from ISAC, a body, IFAC, a body we designed purposely to keep budget and keep government expenditure under close scrutiny. This is even more alarming, Minister, when one considers the exceptional windfalls that we are receiving presently in corporation tax, which means, in effect, we are actually operating a budget deficit without it. And I highlighted in that speech also how it appears that every department is getting a, gump, a bump, every part of government like, getting a bump like they always do. I also described, Minister, how government is giving out participation awards without any connection to performance or delivery. And how in the budget we failed in a time of full employment not to consider the reallocation of other government resources to departments uh, where they're badly needed. Nothing done with respect to that. And I also highlighted how the South East Midlands and the border region is not fully at this national spendathon, and that regional GDP continues to fall in these parts of the country. I know when I say that there will be journalists in Dublin saying, oh, here we go with parish politics yet again, displaying no understanding of national issues. But I might ask you, Minister, and I'd ask government, you know, what is more of a national issue to every taxpaying citizen of this country but to understand how their money is being spent? What is wrong with people asking to ask and see where is the money going? I cannot say with certainty, Minister, where the money is going, but I can say with absolute certainty where it is not going. And it's certainly not coming to the South East region, and it's certainly not coming in any equitable format to my city and county of Waterford. I would say to you, Minister, large parts of Ireland are increasingly angry and, and marginalised by the parish pump politics that's going on with Cabinet at the moment, with the majority of spending going between Dublin and Cork. And you need to have spent a long time in the doll bubble, I think, to think that it's a good idea to spend 50, 60 and even 70 per cent of all state capital investments in Dublin, where 20, 29 per cent of the population reside. I mean, so I'm not sure if you take note of other uh, independent financial advice out of what government gets, but I would highlight to you the South East Monitor, which is an academic paper drawn quarterly by three academics in WIT, and it's been going now for quite a number of years. And they go to all of the individual competitive sectors within the South East economy to understand how we are doing for, uh, within the government programme. And I'll send it on to you, Minister, because I think I'd hope you would bring it to the attention of both Deeper and the Finance Minister to understand the very significant shortcomings. But if I might just highlight a couple that I've raised before in this House, Minister. We have the most efficient Model 4 hospital in the country of nine in University Hospital Waterford, a hospital I'm sure you yourself know quite well, a hospital that stepped up and beyond the mark to deal with the Wexford fire uh, damage this year when they had to take all of the ED patients that were normally uh, would be sent to Wexford were triaged into Waterford. And they did that with no additional uh, support from government financially other than allowing some of the Wexford staff to come into Waterford. And as part of that, they have built up a very significant accruals cost, upwards of seven million, I understand, as part of that expenditure. And they have not been paid that by the Ireland East Group. So that was exceptional expenditure. But at the same time, they've had to close a unit they set up in Kilcreen, a surgical step-down unit with 12 beds, which was costing approximately 1.7 million euro per year, doing really excellent work, taking a lot of pressure off the orthopaedic department, the main orthopaedic trauma unit in University Hospital Waterford, dealing with South East patients, particularly those geriatric patients requiring a lot of rehab post-surgery. And that unit has been shut down because we didn't have the money to support it at the time of all this largesse. And on top of that, Minister, a capital spending programme announced by government in July of this year to a total quantum of 650 million euro to be given to the nine Model 4 hospitals. And what happened? Eight of those hospitals shared in that 650 dividend. 
and University Hospital Waterford, a hospital with the highest level of procedures of any hospital in terms of the staff ratio, was given nothing from that Budget Minister. Nothing by way of capital spent, despite the fact that we've been crying out down there for five years for additional capital infrastructure and additional beds, and we remain the least funded of all the model force in the country. No recognition from government in this budget whatsoever to that situation. And as you're probably aware, Minister, no money provided to open the commitment to government given here by the Tarnished, by the Taoiseach and by the Health Minister repeatedly to open the seven-day cat lab service to emergency heart attack patients. And now with the health recruitment freeze, that is still an abatement. And at the earliest it will be done is probably March, April, May next year. I think that's just a disgrace, Minister, in terms of the commitments that were given in this House. And I might also bring on, Minister, to the issue of higher level education. And I'm sure you're well aware of your government colleague, Minister Harris's lofty promises to the South East when the amalgamation of SETU was being promulgated on the population. And the highest functioning IOT in the country, WIT, was rammed into that association on the basis of transformational change. And can I tell you, Minister, what transformation has occurred in the interim? None, other than we have been excluded completely from national university spending. And to date, government have now committed over 700 million euro, Minister, to national student accommodation solely for the national universities and the technological universities still have no borrowing framework in place to allow them to compete for any of that funding. And bear in mind that WIT was the first IOT and the only in the country to develop its own student accommodation more than 15 years ago. And the thanks we got is to be excluded from all of that funding. And the other area I'd point out to you, Minister, is in terms of, of your government minister, Minister Ryan, the roads budget. And in terms of the roads budget, you know what war forgot in the roads budget this year for the Department of Transport? We got a million euro to scope out a bus connect service for the region. And let me just compare that to what Cork got. Over a billion euro from the transport fund to develop the Dunkettle interchange, the Ring of Skiddy bypass, the Dublin to Limerick motorway, and to look at electrification and light rail in Cork City. Now, Minister, there's a significant and a, a gaping disparity in terms of the treatment of government to the regions. And I'm only talking about the South East. And to be fair to the Chair here, I, th I heard her speak only in the last week, 10 days, about her own region of the North West and the border area. And, Minister, we need to have a proper functioning uh, dashboard in terms of understanding where government goes. And I want to say I brought a private member's bill with the support of the regional group to this House two weeks ago, the Capital Supply and Service Provision Bill which would give a look back on all capital spending five years from the data reporting minister. And that will, is hopefully going to committee stage. And I hope to see that bill progressed and enacted. Because until we have something better than what we have now, what is taking place at Cabinet over the last three and a half years and likely for the next six to 12 months of this government will continue, it appears, without reform. And I can tell you, Minister, I don't know how government expects to stand to the regions of this country after all of this, capital has been washed through the system, saying what you have delivered for the country. And I welcome the cost of living supports. But what we need is strategic infrastructure drivers to help the regions compete on a level with the very large urban centres in this country. And that is not happening. What we are getting is political patronage. Political patronage run wild at this stage, Minister. I would ask you to take this up with your colleagues, please.